Hey beautiful peeps, welcome back to another video. <laughs> Let me open the gate. taking the kids to Poa Place again. Poa Place is a really good place to take kids, to bring your family. There is a zoo. There is a playground with roller coasters, slides, cars for kids to drive, trampolines, a bouncy castle. There's a swimming pool. Right now it's 7.30 a.m. We're starting the day off really early today. We have something to do in Eton and then We'll go to Kapkoi to pick up the kids. This time we're bringing along more kids because we had a test run. Although it was challenging, it's challenging. We only had four kids. If you're confused what I'm talking about, it's in a previous vlog, okay? You could check that out there and enjoy the day with us. We had a lot of fun. The kids had a lot of fun. It was their first time at a playground. So they've been excited for this one since yesterday evening when we told them they've been running around laughing smiling so i cannot wait i love this i remember when i was a kid and they took us on an excursion around the island of saint lucia in the caribbean or they took us out to the town they took us to kfc they took us to the beach i know the joy so i love that we're able to you know have them experience this and it's nice. It will, be some, it will be something they will remember for a very long time. Except the really young one, the two and a half year old, may not remember. Jaden. Only four kids, and Festus was really exhausted. I wasn't too exhausted, but I was a bit overwhelmed by the end of it. Um, at, after the playground, we took them to a restaurant, and everywhere we went, it felt like we were a crowd of people four kids and then two people six people but this time we're going to brave it and we're bringing along about 10 kids but there's only one who's really young all the rest are a little older and they're very mature so that won't be and we're bringing along some adults so that will be really helpful because <laughs> a two and a half year old can be a handful Jaden but he's very good. <laughs> Alright, so we're fueling and putting air in the tire right now before we head up to the village sweeps. So if you enjoy vlogs like this, you enjoy authentic vlogs where I share my first time experience with you. Sit back and enjoy. Take a popcorn, take something, and let's go. Peeps, this time I should try to remember to share with you the gas prices. Total sale, 3,000 shillings. Festus, how much? Tell me, tell me. Total sale, $30 for 16.9 liters. 16.9, 17 liters. She's talking to you. Oh. No, she's not talking to me. Oh. 17 liters for $30 of gas. And in Kenya, there is, <clears throat> well, so far, what I've experienced, and I asked someone, uh, the gas options are just regular gas. They don't have premium, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they don't have. Yeah, they don't have gas and diesel. Yeah. Two options. And just like in St. Lucia, you're served um, by a, an, an attendant at the gas station. They serve you at the gas pump. Gas for the vehicles for fueling and cooking oil. So, oil <laughs> to cook with. Uh, one of the most expensive commodities in Kenya right now. And interesting enough, Kenya has oil as a natural resource. But I think they export it and then import it. I don't really know about that. It's complicated. But just know that gas prices are expensive in Kenya compared to in the US. Although in the US people think gas prices are expensive. But if we compare 
the two countries it's high in Kenya considering the cost of living and the cost of other things as you saw in previous in the previous blog a lot of things are cheaper <coughs> here but there are some things that are really expensive so anyways oh and someone asked to say a um, price of transport cost of transportation um, I did take a border border you saw in a previous blog I did ride on border borders but I never asked Festus the cost so I'll do that see if I can give you some estimates and also maybe give you an idea of distances you may travel and what you have to do so when is that I'll ask him <laughs> there's a tractor going down the road <laughs> There's, there's a lot of farmland around and especially when you go in towards the reserve towards the village there's a lot of farmland so you yep saturday what's going on here it seems well it's only like seven something it's kind of calm for now motorbikes are going people are <coughs> getting off buses people are walking to wherever they're going trucks always trucks on this road because this road is a highway it's a highway let's just say that I'm not sure if it goes to yeah I think this road goes to Nairobi you can take this road to go to Nairobi I'm not sure if it can take this road to go to Uganda there's a road in Eldora town if you keep going down it you will end up in Uganda which is a neighboring country in East Africa yep so you have a lot of transportation of goods here you see this guy on his the motorbike the border border transporting something like bread and crates stacked behind him container trucks always container trucks here so peeps this is actually our last day in Eldoret our yeah our last day in Eldoret our last day in the Rift Valley and tomorrow morning very early we will be heading back to Nairobi the capital of Kenya and then on Monday like 12 a.m. 11.59 p.m. we have an appointment in Eton with Festus is Guga Guga means grandfather and Gogo means grandmother but in St. Lucia Gogo means something else <laughs> it means something else <laughs> But they pronounce it Gogo and Goga, like G, but it's K, it's, I think it's K-O-K-O, -K -O, like Coco, and Goga is K-U-K-A, Goga, but it sounds like G. <coughs> to Nairobi. Nairobi yeah that looks like a good bus that's good town Nofer. so the gas station we just went to it's called Stabex gas station but Annex is written on it because the area is called Annex in Eldoret Stabex in Annex yeah this is where we'll be coming tomorrow eh? this is where we'll be coming in a few hours with the kids not equity bank poor place resort in there someone wanted to know about the cost of transportation here so i was thinking do not do we where are from where you know what i'm saying distance. you have to give an estimate of distance and price depends on the roads but depends on the roads yeah everything here is is variable Okay, so if I want to take a bus from Kapkoi village, the time wow. it takes to drive this car from town to Kapkoi village is about 35-45 minutes. 35-45? For, but for a regular Matatu, like a regular bus, it will probably take 50 minutes to an hour because they'll be picking up customers on the way. And sometimes, depending on the type of roads, depending on the, um, the availability of the vehicles, the prices can change. But now we are paying two dollars from our home, to our home village to, to the city, to the town. Two dollars. Yeah. Yes. So that's like a lot. And do you know an average? 
average how much like a typical person hair would make in a day yeah let's say for somebody in the village like uh without any skills you know like regular skills like just with wow. your aunts and whatever <laughs> no no skills you would be paid three dollars a day three dollars but i have a question you said regular skills with your hands no w without skills and skill meaning you just need labor like force okay okay so like, they're a laborer yes, but like, not like a carpenter not like a carpenter or, okay carpenter fairies they get paid for for somebody like a mason who is building a house they get paid two two thousand shillings in which it's like twenty dollars a day a day if they are building like a house but the laborers who are assisting him would be paid five dollars we we have also the i paid employees in kenya most of them are even paid in, in form of euros and dollars and you'd be surprised that they're even earning more than people in america they're getting paid in euros or dollars maybe five thousand dollars a month in which that's common if you're working for a non-governmental organization so if you're getting paid that amount it means you're living heavy living large because you don't you don't have a lot of expenses Straight this way, you get you go to El Keo Maraquet border. El Keo border. If you go that way towards the <clears throat> right, you're gonna go to Moy Ben, and if you go left, you go to Naiberi. So, the only bills that we have in the village is electricity for those people who have electricity. It's probably gonna range between three dollars to ten dollars depending on what you're using. If you're just using like regular lights and radio and television, it's probably gonna be like three dollars. And if you are getting your electricity for other purposes, let's say for welding and using your high on cooking with it, it's gonna be expensive, probably twenty thirty dollars a month. But for water wise, people usually drill their own power holes. But if you're getting your water from the, you know, like the government sponsored kind of water supply, you will you will be paying usually from five dollars to ten dollars a month. But that water is not always consistent because 
they usually ration the water they give you the water on in in tanks they might give you on monday and then thursday while another village would get another water on tuesday and wednesday and, you know because we have so many villages and the water they only get the water from one point so that's it you know they actually do that in saint lucia russian too yeah they started some years ago they started rationing the water especially when it rains the water stops flowing in the pipes they close the water source because maybe they're treating it or something i don't know but a lot of the times they ration the water they may give this village water and then the next village water later in the day or the next day whatever but so you just have electricity water bill yeah and you pay that on a monthly basis on a monthly basis but for me for our plan for my home we only have we have electricity since when i was young i never saw my home without electricity we've been paying between about three five dollars to ten dollars depending because we've already supplied our electricity to other some of my brother's houses so it's not only one house that's getting the electricity it's probably like three or four houses with one one electricity source so that's why it's high but if you divide it between the number of houses that are, that's using that electricity it's just gonna average like four dollars a month so if you're living in the village you will probably have an, like a home temporary or permanent depending on your financial level so if you live in any of those usually you don't pay any property taxes for houses so it basically if you have already built yourself something a structure that's it so you own the land you own the house that's nothing else no rent no rent but at some point the property taxes you have to pay it but it, i think it's not a lot of money i think it's ten dollars a month a year for every piece of land that you own ten dollars a year and that's not a lot i don't think if people even pay that so they don't they don't and, you. yes but if you're living in the town or closer to the towns the property taxes are higher because you have to pay monthly like you have to pay monthly yearly to the government you have to lose it's so like 30 dollars depending on the, the amount of land you have so it's different in towns people usually rent or maybe if they own a house they have to pay property taxes for that house like for the place they live it's different it's just like more of america but it's lower lower payment wise so it's kind of different it's good and also sometimes it's not <laughs> because the government doesn't get money from people and that's when things are not done and also i mean it, just wanting to live a nice beautiful life relaxing like after your retirement this is a place to stay because with the amount of money you've saved maybe a small amount you can have yourself an helper somebody who can help you with your you know with your land with your kitchen with your, you know at least you can you can at least have like three people to help you maybe one kid man kid woman one farm boy
saw at the corner of the of you know a v-shaped road we passed a shortcut basically it's a dead, dead road so if you're hearing a lot of background noise it's it's the dirt road with rocks Elian, these cows just came from the cattle dip too oh can you see it Bono tip? i hope you enjoyed this vlog <laughs> Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying our 